OK, now let's talk a little bit about fax workflows. We're going to go through what's new with fax workflows in WriteFax 20.2. Um, the workflows were introduced actually in WriteFax 16.6, .6, and they were greatly enhanced with 20.2 to make it much more usable. So we're going to go through a few slides, and then we're going to do a brief demo on a basic fax workflow that would be used in a, the healthcare sector. So first of all, some enhancements. Um, we have increased document security with enhanced visibility into user roles and actions. There's now a built-in exception handling to allow faxes to be held for special treatment. So this would be faxes that had an exception, maybe a problem or, or something that is not part of the standard workflow. You can have it go through an exception workflow. And now you can actually create and manage workflows using a very easy workflow configurator. Some additional enhancements is um, a new check-in check-out system with an availability column. So now People that are sharing a workflow know who's working on the fax at that moment and if it's available or not available. And the faxes are, are fully indexed to provide a more accurate search and filter experience. And now the fax history in XML provides branching, exception handling, rejections, SLAs, and metadata viewing. Okay, we're going to start the demo of the fax workflow. As you can see, I have fired up the right fax fax utility so I can show you a real use case of the fax workflows. Remember, right fax has always been an important tool for document centric workflows. The powerful routing engine in right fax ensures that the correct document gets to the right place as quickly as possible. Now we can capture important information along the way, adding even more value to the document. To illustrate the power of the new workflow engine, we are going to walk through a quick three-step process taken from the healthcare world. It's going to be a claims processing workflow for durable medical equipment, also known as DME. Okay, so first a claim clerk will capture important information from the fax, then pass it off to a nurse to review and approve the data. Then finally, upon approval, the claim and all the collected data automatically be exported to a folder so it can be imported into a separate back office application for final processing. So as a claims clerk, part of my job is to process new DME claim faxes in the order they receive. So the first thing I'm going to do is expand my workflows. And I'm doing it under the claims clerk fax box. And as you can see, there is multiple workflows here. The one I'm going to be interested for the demo is Claims DME. When I click Claim DME, the first thing you'll notice is uh, some new fields along the top. We have an availability field that defines if anyone is currently in the workflow. So workflows are not assigned to individuals, they're assigned to users or groups. So you have multiple people assigned to a workflow and Whoever goes into it, by clicking on it, the availability will change from green to red to let other people know you are in it. And to the right, we have all our workflow metadata fields. I can open up a little bit, and you can see how they're defined. So the next thing I'm going to do is, is actually show you a fax coming in from the outside world. It's going to get assigned to the claims DME workflow. To do that, I'm just going to go to the administrator, and I'm going to create a fax. So I click new fax, and in this case, I'm going to put in the four-digit route code assigned to the claims DME workflow, which is 4002. Now remember, I'm demoing it, so I'm actually sending it from right fax into a workflow. In the real world, this would be coming from an outside hospital, insurance company, medical group, where they would be using either a fax server or a fax machine, and they would give the full 10 digits, such as like 212, 710-4002, that would come in from the outside world, right fax would answer, and it would route that fax to the claims DME workflow. So for the name, I'll put claims DME, and I'm going to throw in a, a form here. This will be a, an example of a DME form, 
and I'm going to hit send. Okay, we're going to have WriteFX process this. It'll, it'll be pretty quick because it's all internal. Okay, sending. Okay, so the fax is complete, and now if we click on a claims DME, we see a new fax has arrived. So let's go into the newest one here. We're going to click on it. And as you can see, there are some new metadata fields to the right. Now, based on the facts, I'm going to look at the claims form. Let me zoom out a little bit. Perfect. And we are going to enter the information from the facts. So the patient name we'll put in is John Doe. The patient ID, which is in the upper right, is 9. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, A, B, five, zero, zero, one. The provider name is Dr. Robert Brown. The provider NPI is right here, which will be one, two, three, nine, eight, seven, four, five, six, zero. Oh. And the prior authorization number, which is down here, is nine, eight, seven. 654-32101. So I have entered all my metadata. Some fields are required. In this case, patient name, patient ID, and provider MPI are required fields. So when I created this workflow, I defined those as required. The provider name and prior authorization number are optional fields. So that means that if I didn't enter the provider name or the prior authorization, I can still complete the workflow but I need to at least put a patient name, patient ID, and a provider NPI. So at this point, I'm going to click Complete Workflow. I can add some comments if I want, and I'm going to save it. Once I save it, as you can see, it is no longer in my fax box or my fax workflow. It moved to the nurse's fax workflow. So if I go to the fax box to Nurse 1 and I go to Claims Approval, I will see a new workflow fax has arrived. So if I click on this now, I will see the same facts, and I can go and look at the metadata that was previously entered, and I can confirm it looks good. So as the nurse, my job is to authorize and, and confirm that the metadata was entered properly and matches. Basically, I'm a verifier. So I'll look down and say it looks good. Everything matches. So then I'll go to my metadata here, and I'll initial it as the, authoriz as the authorization, the date, And I can define if I want to approve it or deny it. I will approve it. And I have the ability to add some notes here. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is hit Complete Workflow. Again, I have my comments. I will then save it. It is now removed from my fax box and now is moved to the Claims Archive. So if I click Claims Archive here, we will see at 138, here it is. And this is the the facts, the original facts. Now, this is not a workflow. This is the final resting place for the facts. So it has two purposes. One is for archival purposes. You can always go and look at the facts. And number two, we have this user set up to deliver the facts to a network folder with the metadata. So if I go onto my file system here, under XML Gen, we will see three new files showed up. So the first file is the fax itself. The next file is the generic XML metadata, just that goes with the fax, like the date and time it came in, the owner of the fax, maybe the remote ID, and all the information that is passed on the inbound fax. And finally, our workflow metadata, which will be the two workflows that this fax went through view the approval, and first the DME, so it works its way up. So first it hit the claims DME, it has the patient ID, the patient name, the prior authorization number, the provider name, and the provider MPI, and then the approval, so it was approved, who approved it, JK, and the date, no notes in this case. There is a configuration, so you know we can combine the XML metadata from the generic facts and the workflow.